Are you playing the market or is the market playing you? You done taking a wrong turn. The Money Life Market Call helps you answer the question by discussing what's working in the investment world right now. It's working. It's working. It's working. It's real guidance about real investments from real experts. I play at expert level. You might find that next great investment you were looking for or hear that it's time to sell something you expected to hold on to. Let it go. You'll learn how investment pros make decisions and what they see for the future. See your future. Be your future. You may be excited one moment and angry or frustrated the next. Mr. McGee, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. But that's just life in the market as Chuck Jaffe talks stocks, mutual funds, and more. I can live with that. In the Daily Money Life Market Call. Yes, it's Money Life Market Call time, and I'm pleased to be introducing you to someone new in the market call today. His name is Jimmy Mengel. He is the investment director at the Crow's Nest which is part of Outsider Club. And Outsider Club, well, they publish a number of different newsletters and they basically take a look at some things that maybe would be considered an alternative for smaller investors, things that you might not hear about in the mainstream media. If you want to learn more about it all, OutsiderClub.com. We have a link that'll get you directly to the Crow's Nest and everything about Jimmy's publication. It's all up on the Money Life Show recent and upcoming guest page. By the way, Jimmy is on Twitter at Mengel E D. Jimmy Mengel, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Chuck. It's a, it's a pleasure. We always start with methodology because as much as my audience might want to find out what you're buying or selling, until they know how you do it, well, a buy, sell, or hold recommendation is meaningless. So explain what it is that you look for at the crow's nest and how it works. So from a very young age, um, I was introduced to stocks uh, by my father, uh, and he was he was kind of your typical blue chip buy and hold type of guy. Um, so I started investing, you know, when I was maybe ten or eleven, uh, and it, it was remarkable because I, I I got kind of into it early and then just you know became a teenager and started doing other things. <laughs> um, but when I checked back in on, you know, the, the GEs, the Johnson and Johnsons, some of the uh, investments I made when I was younger, um, ten years later, I was like, "Whoa, I'm I'm loaded." <laughs> <laughs> so it got me picked back up into that uh, situation, and now um, I'm, I kind of write about that in the crow's nest in terms of um, long-term dividend stocks and then dividend reinvestment programs, and how you can really kind of set and forget. Uh, your investments, um, you know, to, you know, carry you through into your, into your retirement. And for you, is it sort of looking at things like buying dividend achievers? I mean, is it, let's find that great company, that story behind it, or how much does the day-to-day -day machinations of the market and all the things that we're reading about on every news site and what have you enter into it? So I try to not to let the day to day enter into it at all. Um, so what I have typically been looking for uh, are like dividend aristocrats, like companies that slowly but surely are growing that dividend, have enough money and wherewithal, um, you know, to to meet results and you kind of know where they're know where they're sitting. Um, so I, I do take that long term approach where if you're raising a dividend for 25 years in a row, um, you're doing something right. And I'm happy to throw some money in there and just let it sit for, you know, a decade and then take a look at it afterwards. And I'm almost always thrilled. And what makes you give up on a stock? Um, dividend cuts uh, are definitely something that gives me pause. Um, but to tell you the truth, most of, most of the stocks I buy, I don't have to give up on. Um, at least in terms of kind of the dividend, like long-term blue chips. Um, it's, it's been quite w rare I've had to sell something because I was worried about them. Um, oftentimes, if, if they do like hit a bad patch or have some bad earnings one year, uh, I'll, I'll go in and, you know, double down and say, oh, I know, say, you know, Disney, for instance, had a couple rough quarters now, here and there. When that happens, I just go back in and be like, okay, well, I think they're going to rebound. I think this is just a minor blip. And it helps you dollar cost average your position pretty well, especially if you're in a drip. 
where you know you're going to be sticking with it for a while. How much do you wind up saying, okay, let's have a manageable portfolio with only X number of names? How much do you go, okay, wait, I'm excited about this thing, but to give it room in my portfolio, I have to give, get rid of something else? Yeah, so that's the other part of my portfolio. I have a slew of companies that I know I'm sticking with, barring any major astronomical disasters. So I have that stable of dividend aristocrats that I know are going to do well over the long term. And then for the other part of my portfolio, I kind of have fun with. And those are the ones that I usually, you know, take them or leave them. In terms of the Crow's Nest portfolio, it's called the Crow's Nest because the most important part of the ship is the Crow's Nest. So if you want to break it down like that, the Crow's Nest sees everything. It can plot out the future. But if you're down on a pirate ship, per se, you're you're in that day-to-day sword fight. And there is a place for that. And in my newsletter, I call it the plundering section. Okay. And you can pretty much separate that. So, you know, keep, a, keep I don't know, 75 to 80 percent of your portfolio in safe long-term stocks that you know we're, are going to be there for you in the end. And then if you want to, you know, fool around with some of the fun stuff, you know, pick up your sword and start uh, slicing away down there. And that's when it's, it becomes a, l- a lot easier to decide whether you want to cut and run from a stock. Okay. So... Who's a poster child for the methodology? What's a stock that stands out to you right now as something that folks should be looking at buying based on all the long-term prospects that you like? I like to invest in things I use, I understand, and that I know have sort of a moat around them. So one example would be uh, Sherman Williams. So they um, have consistently delivered over the years. And I know people are going to be painting houses. People are going to be doing construction. Um I go to Lowe's and Home Depot, which I think may be companies we may be talking about a little later. But I see their acquisition strategy. I see their global growth. And I am quite sure that Sherman Williams will be around for a long time. I think they've raised dividends for you know 38 years so far. The dividend growth is obviously one major thing, but I like the recession-resistant businesses, and I feel like this is pretty much one of them. It's got a strong brand. It's hard for new people to break into the paint market mm-hmm. and then say, like if you would have put 10 grand into Sherman Williams 20 years ago, if you put it in a re- dividend reinvestment program, that's an easy $182,000. Wow. So it's those type of things. And for example, it, uh, and I, I try to play up the drip situation because without the drip, and if, if say you invested in Sherman Williams 20 years ago, you would have, yeah, maybe $136,000. But when you're going to retire, $50,000 goes a long way. Absolutely. So that's Sherwin-Williams, which is ticker symbol SHW. What else stands out to you right now? In kind of the same vein, McCormick and Company, which is, you know, a spice and food manufacturer, it's kind of the same type of thing. Regardless of what happens, people are buying prepared foods. They're buying spices. If you've been to a grocery store, um, if you're you know, picking up cinnamon or cumin or whatever you're going to be cooking with, you're you're buying McCormick. Um, And it's kind of a personal story because I'm I'm from Maryland and then uh, grew up a few miles from the McCormick Spice factory. So every morning I would smell, you know, Old Bay seasoning, which is really big here in Baltimore, or a new day I would smell lemon pepper seasoning. And you just, you just know that those type of products are going to be around. They're going to keep selling them. No crash, no economic collapse is really going to affect people making their own food. In fact, a lot of times it's quite the opposite. So yeah, it's kind of that recession-proof idea if you're going to be investing long-term like that. So that's McCormick, which is ticker symbol MKC. Now we're going to find out how you feel about some stocks that my audience is particularly interested in. You got to know when to hold them or fold it. Know when to fold them. It's hold them or fold them time here with Jimmy Mengel, the investment director at The Crow's Nest, part of the Outsider Club, and it's outsiderclub.com for more information. Jimmy's on Twitter at 
Mengel ED. It's all linked up at the Money Life Show recent and upcoming guest page. Hold It or Fold It is where we put our guest to your test. We don't just ask for holds or folds. It's buy, sell, hold, sell short, whatever that they're taking a look at. And if you want to get an expert opinion on a stock or a mutual fund that you like, send your name, your hometown, and the ticker symbols you're interested in to Chuck at Money Life Show. Dot com. Jimmy, we're going to start today with a request we got from Dale in London, Ohio for Aqua America. That's ticker symbol WTR. So Aqua America, I think, is a very unique position that most people don't read about or hear about. And as I was saying with my drip positions, a little known fact is a lot of companies will offer dividend reinvestment programs with a discount on the stocks you buy through the drip. Aqua America is one of those. So if you were to buy Aqua America through their dividend reinvestment program, they offer up to a 5% discount on stocks you buy that way. So that's, you know, baked in yield for you right there. So we know where this one's going. We're just talking about, you know, hey, with the drip, et cetera, this is at a price range where you're willing to buy it, especially if you get that discount, correct? Yeah, absolutely. It, especially if you get the discount. So um, that's, a fi- that's a 5% buffer right there for you right away. Um, obviously utilities are great, uh, in good times and bad. It makes for a great long-term position and they've done a lot of wonderful acquisitions over the last couple decades that really opened them up to a lot of public water systems in the country. There you go. Last thing they've paid dividends for the last 72 years and have increased them consistently. So great stock. He either gets on board or he gets left behind. That's a buy on Aqua America WTR. Sam in Holmes Beach, Florida, wants to know about the Home Depot. That's ticker symbol HD. I like Home Depot. As I said, like a lot of these companies are not going away. So I like Home Depot. They have earnings coming up in the next week or so. And I think they're going to see strong earnings this year. And they tend to beat investor expectations time and time again. Obviously, the summer is good for home repair. I know I'm doing a ton myself. So I think Home Depot is good for a long-term play. I tend to like Lowe's more. Lowe's is a dividend aristocrat where Home Depot is not. Okay. So I think Lowe's is kind of the sleeper player there. They don't have the name recognition, but they have a lot of the growing business that Home Depot maybe doesn't. So So what we're really saying, actually, is that you would hold, for somebody who's got Home Depot, hold it if you got it, but... You, so so it's really a hold on Home Depot. No money changes hands today. Because it's a buy on Lowe's. So if you're going to enter that space, you'd be buying ticker symbol L. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> Josh and Pat. Yeah, I mean, given the two, I would, I would go with Lowe's there you for go. long term. There you go. Both are very solid. Josh in Petaluma, California wants to know about WFCF. That's where food comes from. I was thrilled to uh, hear about that. Nobody knows about the stock as far as I'm concerned. Like when I bring it up, people are like, what What the heck is that? But I interviewed CEO John Saunders last year for my newsletter. And I think, uh, I think this is going to be kind of a sleeper hit because no matter where you go right now, you see food being labeled as natural or 100% GMO free or any of these taglines that people like consumers are really getting into. I think that's a trend that's going to continue. Where food comes from essentially audits and verifies all of those claims. So I think as more and more companies, the McDonald's and Wendy's, and they already have deals with Whole Foods, as that continues to be a trend, if they get a few more deals, I think the stock is going to do really well. And I'm I'm definitely buying it, say, under $2.50 for, you know, a big payday later on. I'm in this for the long haul. So that's a buy, again, a conditional buy under $2.50 on Where Food Comes From Incorporated, WFCF. Roy in Douglasville, Pennsylvania wants to know about Colgate Palmolive Corp. That's CL. Yeah, that hits a lot of my targets there. They're globally solid. Um, I think they're, they have about a 50-50 balance in domestic and international sales. And over the last 20 years, they boosted their gross margin from... to 60%. They've increased dividends for 54 consecutive years. And then they have that special cachet of like serious brands. So you have your, aside from Colgate toothpaste, you have your speed stick, you have Irish spring, you have Ajax. Like these are things that people really consider when they go to the grocery store and they choose to buy this over generic brands. And they're products everybody needs every single week. I like that. 
I think they yield maybe two and a half percent, somewhere around there. It's kind of a no-brainer, especially if you just want to sit on it for the next 30 years. Would you mind stepping aside? I've got a purchase to make. That's a buy on Colgate Palmolive, ticker symbol CL. And last, for Andrew in Alexandria, Virginia, it's HCP Incorporated, which is ticker symbol HCP. The healthcare REITs are a little bit tricky. You have to worry about interest rate environments, that sort of thing. I think now is a good time to buy HCP because they've been beaten down over the last couple of years. They had some very serious issues with their uh, Manicare affiliate, but they've spun a lot of that stuff off. They spun a lot of the businesses that were not making money off into a separate company entirely. Looking at, you know, just demographics, you're going to need healthcare providers. You're going to need senior living. You're going to need these things. That is going to ramp up. I think they've done enough to cut the fat and focus on their money-making endeavors. They were also the only REIT in the dividend aristocrats list until, you know, a couple, maybe two years ago. So I, I, I suspect that they will start ramping up dividends again. I think they yield around 5% now. Um, that they should be able to get back in the uh, in the game in that regard. I would definitely buy um, HCP. Bye, bye, bye. Is that all you can think about? That was a buy on HCP, which is HCP Incorporated. And speaking of good buys, we have to say ours now to Jimmy Mangle. But, Jimmy, it's been great chatting with you. Thanks so much for joining me on the show. My pleasure, Chuck. Anytime. Jimmy Mangle is investment director at The Crow's Nest, part of the Outsider Club. Check it out at OutsiderClub.com. He's on Twitter, at Mangle. I'll let you figure out how to spell it, but you can find it on our website. All right. We're just about done with today's show, but stick with us through the break. We'll come back, wrap things up, set you up for the rest of the week, and then we'll send you home. This is Money Life. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. 